Welcome to this time out with Marcus Ikure. Guess who we have in the studio today? <laughs> is this surprising to you? His name is a young man. His name is R.C. Gostein. Are you a barrister, please? Yes, I am. Oh, you are a barrister? Yes, That's yes. barrister R.C. Gostein. Yeah, he is a young, very energetic and vibrant, you know, uh, guy. And um, he's known to a lot of people. He's an embodiment of the Robo history and history generally. So he's a young man who has done so much for himself. And, uh, you know, I think a role model for a, young, a lot of young people. He's also an author. He has authored a lot of books. Like, how many books have you authored? I've been writing, I've been writing, I have been lot. Wow. But yeah. over 30, over 30. Over 30 books are so much at, at this young age. You know, uh, 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 welcome to this program. Thank you so much. Man. Yes, uh, please, you'll be a, a little bit audible so that uh, a viewer over there can hear you clearly. Um, I want us to look at the issue of youth, youth in this region, you know, and uh, in the light of 2023. Uh, so much is happening at the moment. And uh, if you look at history, you find out that youth historically were very vibrant and you know those who fought for the independence of this country you know majority of them were youth now what is that thing that you think gave them the level of success they achieved getting and achieving the independence of this country the youth of yesterday the youth of yesterday in my binoculars of view achieved their aim because of togetherness there was what we call unity of purpose. They had it. They wanted a revolution. They wanted a transformation. They wanted to repeat what transpired in England, what we refer to as Magna Carta 1215. It was a revolution in England that brought about change, that brought about peace, that brought about the transformation that they currently enjoy. The youth of this country, I mean, yesterday, somebody like Enauru, who was very young, who was below 25 in 1953, saw more courage, moved for the independence, independence that you and I enjoy today. Isn't that surprising to you? How old was Akitola? How old was even Kayode? These young people who were agitated, who wanted the liberation that you and I currently enjoy, but I will refer to it that the democracy we still enjoy indeed is a partial democracy. It is a democracy by some selected few who came together to draft a constitution to sue themselves so as to oppress a set of people. As far as I am concerned, it is an injustice. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, so, uh, Barista, God's time, uh, let me bring you back to the current situation. You just talked about uh, unity of purpose as a binding force that held the youth of yesterday together, that made them actualize their vision, you know, for this country yes. in their days. Now, uh, um, let's look at the youth of today. What is your assessment of the youth of today? Well, I'm a youth. Okay. I want to say we have lost it. That we can actually correct it. Today, the fact that we no longer work on one principle and follow it up is a huge challenge. Today, when a youth wants to grow, when a youth wants to attain a position, the person who is saying no to it is a youth. The person who is saying, you must not grow more than me. The person who is saying, you must not occupy that position is a youth. Are we really cost? Do we grow old and become foolish in this country? As a youth, we must have what I talked about not quite long. Unity of purpose. We must have it. So I want to encourage youth of today to return back to history study history to know why in Hauro, a young man moved for independence to know why akintola and others how they came together form an ideology and they followed it up so as to supplanted this correct cabal 
Because what we have today is a cabal of people, old people, who have come together to steal from our region. Maybe we'll go look into that. Yeah, sure, to sure. steal from our, our region, use our region, you know, impoverish our region so as to develop their place i think that is that is ungodly that is unfair to democracy that is why i said we are still enjoying partial democracy anyhow you see that is how it is so uh barista god's time uh, uh, for the youth of today you've just mentioned that uh, uh, we don't have unity you we know lack that, unity. that we lack, we lack unity. unity you know so what do you think is the re what do you think the youth of today need to do to you know change the narrative first we must organize public debates okay. or what i refer to as seminars or lectures anything you want to give to it yes where we have to enlighten restructure reanalyze critical areas where we have failed in the past for example if we come to robo yes where our youths most of them if not all now see politics as the only way to livelihood. We have to actually explain to them, enlighten them that there is life outside politics. Higo Sanomi is not a politician, he is successful. Michael Ibru wasn't a politician when he became a billionaire. It was in his later life he went into politics. Ask yourself, are the lives of the Daffy known and made it to the top without politics? Politics came in later. So, as a young man, you must, you must have this foresight that there is life outside politics. And the only way to correct that is through public debates, lectures, seminars, uh, for the purpose of enlightenment. This is just my view. You may have your view anyway. Uh, yes, uh, that's a fantastic one, uh, uh, Barista Gostein. You know, uh, you did touch on something very vital that... Uh, you know, uh, um, uh, the only way to make money is not through politics. There are genuine ways to make money. All you just need to do is to be industrious, you know, have a, 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 a purpose and something you are pushing, something you are doing, you know. So uh, I, I want to ask you of this, uh, not too young to lead uh, uh, this thing. Let's talk about it. Uh, before now, a lot of youth were singing not too young to lead song. But today, we don't hear of that song. Do you believe in that not too young to uh, lead uh, by mantra? I believe in it. Okay. Only few of us believe in it. These few of us are the ones saying that we should forget party and vote competence. Those who do not believe in it are saying party is supreme. When you need change, change does not come overnight. You agitate, you network, you create alliance. We should not forget history that the youths alone can determine who governs Nigeria. Unfortunately or sadly, the youths are the ones saying youths cannot govern this country. Have you tried youths and they failed? The answer is no. So if we must, if we must, because I believe in the not too young to rule, we must go back to history. We must network as youths. As you communicate to me, I communicate to you, I communicate to another person. You do the same, we will get there. Uh, but with what is currently happening on social media, you find out today that the best positions they give to the youth is nothing uh, more than uh, SA, PA, you know, and all that. You hardly find a youth because we're act actually going to come to define who a youth is. You know, you actually find a youth holding very sensitive, you know, position in our polity today. And you see on Facebook youth insulting each other, you know, creating enemies for themselves, you know, and all that. What do you have to say about that? Well, uh, hunger is a virus. Uh, but while you are hungry, you must not forget that you have a name to protect. Some of us, you, Marcos Ekure, as seen God's time, and a few others could have chosen that path. But we decided to stay afar from politics. This is not to say that we do not have those we support. We have a few we support, those who believe in their ideology. But when these persons also decide to turn the negative way, we look at them and say, go to air for all I care. That is the belief we live in. Now, um, look at something. There is something you must look at. If we really want to, really want to determine change, we must look at those we vote to elect us. 
I, I mean those we vote to represent us. The problem of this country starts with the delegates. How can in Bayesa State six persons determine who becomes a senator? Is it that insane? And out of the six, four we are contesting. It simply means that only two persons determined. It's terrible. <laughs> it's terrible. Now, Barista, I can see God's time. Uh, you know, uh, still talking about the uh, um, the misdemeanor on the part of the youth. A lot of youth out there in the recent time were actually coming up to say that uh, I see God's time is becoming, you know, too obviously, uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, um, uh, attacking on Facebook, on social media and all that, that you attack personalities, uh, you don't have regard for anybody. You know, what do you have to say about that? Well, uh, when you say the truth, you are highly hated. Do not expect that when you speak the truth, you will be loved by those your words ought. I do not see that as attack. For example, I personally fought against my brother, who was new chairman of my community, who wanted to be the Mama Gaddafi of my community. And I told him, my brother, this thing is not your birthright. If I could do that to my brother, why can't I tell the man representing me that he has not done well? So this is not attack. This is all about big concern. This is all about being patriotic. Sadly, the politics we play in Nigeria is built on pre-bedalism. If this man comes, let me be very frank, let me use my state as a case study. The two major persons contesting, if they become the governor of Delta State, 70% of the development of Delta will happen in their villages. Quote me today, underline it. That is what I mean by prebedalism. This country has been built on prebedalism. It was for this purpose, some like minds, elders, it was a viable agreement, came together and said that when the president comes from the north, the advice will come from what they sat. It is a simple agreement. Because they already know that when this person comes as president, he should develop his region. When it gets to your turn, develop your region. So in this simple science, they call it pre-pedalism. But those of us who understand it, we are not agitating that. Oh my brother, oh my sister, if these people they've got in it, why don't we get it? And when we do that, people say we are very insane. Barrister, do you think that's a bright kind of uh, practice uh, in uh, what you call democracy? You know, the what you call pre-pedalism. Do you think it's the right practice in a democratic system of government? Well, as I refer to it, that we are still experiencing partial democracy. Okay. It is not a good practice. Rotational politics has never been the best way. But it has become the practice of the black man because we are naturally born corrupt. It has become, if I let, let us look at it from this angle. You have a family, I have a family. You will not ignore your children to take care of mine. That is already primitivism. I have a family, you have yours. You will not ignore yours to take care of mine. So, why do I expect the governor of Delta State to leave our Alero to develop Ovirogo where I come from? Yeah, but, 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 uh, but uh, I think God's time, I, I don't think I quite agree with that, you know, because uh, for some time now, I've always believed in equity. When you say equity, all right, now you give, you know, uh, to Caesar what Caesar, you know, just like even the Bible made it very clear, okay? Now, and one of the reasons I feel that a lot of people are clamoring for rotational governorship is because of this thing you call pre -bedalism. So they will have opportunity to fight for their people. But the principle of democracy actually, you know, expresses the fact that when you are a governor, you are a governor to everybody. Even the political party that brought you in is not really of any consequence because it's just a vehicle through which you came in as a governor. So you should be a governor to both those in PDP, APC, ADC, you know, PPP and all political parties. But the practice we are having now, could we say that the pre pedalism you just talked about has become a virus that's eating deep into everybody such that when somebody becomes a governor, then the person becomes a governor to his people alone. 
and you see if a PDP person, for instance, wants to benefit from APC governorship candidate or uh, uh, governor, then the loyalists or supporters will be attacking. No, 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 no. Why should you help so so person? You know, forgetting that we are all under a state called Delta State, and the person is a governor for Delta State. You know, what do you think about that? Do you think it's a good practice when we say we're under democracy? Well, just yesterday, yes. I was a victim of this. Okay. I was added to a group. As soon as I made a comment in that group, a well-known chief in Uroboland okay. attacked me and said that I think of them who is an APC member, who is a core APC member. Why must he be added to this group? Asin is a victim of it. I already understand these things. Okay. They are not correct, but it is the practice. No, 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 yeah. But you know, I'm actually saying this because you talked about uh, pre-bedalism, you know, and yeah. that you don't expect a man who is from Owa Alero to...